In this video we're going to look at the next part of the scientific report, what you saw, or in this case it's the results section. We're going to look at the three ways of presenting your results, numerically in a table, pictorially as part of a graph, and in words where you describe your trends. So first, firstly, your results table. So as I said, this is a numerical or a numbers way of representing your results. And there's a few rules that we have when making a table. In the first column, we should have the independent variable. Then the other columns will be the different trials of the dependent variable. Each column needs to have a title at the top as well as have its units in the title, which are shown in brackets. And because we have the units in brackets up the top, it means that our table doesn't need any units going down the column, because it's all referring to those units up in the top. So we can just have numbers in the actual column. In the last column, we'll show the average of the dependent variable. So say you do three trials, there'll be five columns. The first column will be your independent variable, the next three columns will be trial one, trial two, and trial three. And the last column, the fifth column, will be the average of those dependent variables. What I'm going to do now is put these rules into practice using an example. And I'm going to do this in Microsoft Excel because it's easy to use and does some calculations for me. And the experiment that I'm going to draw a table for is one where I looked at the time it takes sugar to dissolve in different temperatures of water. So my independent variable is going to be the temperature of the water and the units that that will be measured in is degrees Celsius. So I'll write in my first column over here the temperature of the water with degrees Celsius as my units in brackets. Okay, now that I've typed this in you can see that the title actually goes over the next two boxes. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is come up here between the Alpha and Bravo column. Click on it and make that column a little bit wider so that, that all that title fits. Okay, my remaining columns are going to be my dependent variables, uh, which for this experiment is the time taken for sugar to dissolve. So I'll put that in my next column over here. And you can see that I've included seconds in brackets because I'm measuring the time it takes for some this to dissolve in seconds. Now again, this is going over a number of columns. So I could extend this out to make it fit. But what I'm going to do instead is because the time taken to dissolve is going to be the next four columns, I'm going to use this heading for the four columns. So I highlight those four columns. So I'll have my trial one, trial two, trial three, and the average. And I click on the Merge and Center button up here. And it will merge and center these. So uh, rather than the four cells, I've got one big cell above those four columns. Now, as I said, I'm going to have trial one, trial two, trial three, and average, so I better label those as well. Wonderful. And now this heading for our, my independent variable, the temperature of the water, is only taking up one line, while these is taking up two lines. So what I'll do is I'll merge and center those to create that into one box as well. So now I have all my headings sorted up. Okay. I'll now put in my different independent variables and you'll remember from the previous video that I said the independent variables generally because you're controlling them will go up by a set amount. So in this case they've all gone up by 10 degrees. So we've got 20, 30, 40, 50 gone up by 10 degrees. So if you're looking at this and you were trying to work out the variables that would be a good indicator that the temperature is the independent. Okay, I now need to get my results from the experiment and fill in the different trials that I did. So I've done three trials for each temperature, uh, which will come into my reliability later on. So I'll put those results that I got in now. 
All right, we've got all my results in now, but we still have to find the average. Now, one of the great things about Excel is it can do calculations like this for you. All you need to do is in that box that's average, we're going to do a sum. To start off a sum or a function, what we do is type the equal sign to tell Excel that we're doing a calculation here. We then want to tell it what calculation we're going to do. And here we're going to average them. So we just type average. And you can see that average has popped up in this box. Click that one. Now it asks us which numbers we're going to average. So I want to average these three numbers. So I highlight them. And you can see here that in brackets it tells me which cells that I'm highlighting. So B3, B3, so this one, through to, so the colon here means through to. So it goes B3 through to D3, so that includes C3. They're the ones I want. So I, again, just close those brackets and press enter, and it gives me an average automatically. What I can do now is then either go and do the average for the other boxes. So say equals average and then highlight these to get the average. Uh, but what I'll do is rather than do that, because I've already got the sum up here, what I'm going to do is in this case use the fill tool. So I'll get my pointer, which is the little white cross, and you can see that there's a little square in the bottom of that cell, in the bottom corner. I hover over that and it turns into a black plus. I can then drag that equation down to all the ones in that column, and it will automatically, so if I click on that, it's automatically put that uh, equation in for me. Now with this, it can play games when you drag it down, so just double check to make sure that the equation's right and it's actually pointing to the right cells. And so if you highlight that one and you click up here into the formula bar, it'll actually highlight those cells that you're averaging. So it's an easy way to check to see that you're doing the right thing. Press enter. Okay. Now finally, we've got these, and some of these aren't whole numbers, so it's a bit messy. What we can do is we can change the amount of decimal points that we have using these buttons up here. So what I'm going to do is do it to one decimal place. And because it's a table and I'm going to want to paste it into my scientific report, I'm going to highlight all the boxes uh, or all the lines in this table. So to do that, I click up here into the borders and highlight all borders. Okay, so I've now got my table. Okay, the next way to present your results is in a pictorial representation, so in a picture, which in science we use a graph. And again, there's rules for drawing a graph. The independent variable must be on the horizontal axis or the x-axis. The dependent variable should be on the vertical axis or the y-axis. The axes need to be labeled, so to show what those two variables are, plus have the units in brackets. So same as your table had the units in brackets in the title, your graph will also have the units in brackets. You need to work out your scale before you actually start plotting your points, and it needs to be able to fit all your results without being awkward. Now, if you're drawing this, the rule of thumb is to make your graph no smaller than two-thirds of the graph paper that you're given. When it comes to marking the points out, we mark the points using crosses. And then rather than joining those points or joining the crosses, we draw a line of best fit or a curve of best fit, depending on what's appropriate for your results. And all of these things in the graph should be done in pencil. So we do our graph in pencil. Finally, you're going to have an explanation of your trends. So you're going to use words to describe the results you got. So what you want to do is you want to describe your trend. So a trend is what you saw happen. 
as well as quote a couple of the specific numbers to illustrate that trend. So here, uh, going from the table that I drew earlier, it was found that the hotter water dissolved sugar faster, so that's our trend, the hotter water dissolved sugar faster. And then some specific numbers. This can be seen in the sugar dissolving in 56 seconds at 20 degrees and only, 40, uh, only 24 seconds at 80 degrees. Okay, so you can see there I've described my trend and quoted some numbers. Okay, so your result section or the what you saw should include a table to show your results in numbers with the independent in the first column, the dependent in the following columns, and the title and units in brackets at the top of each column. It should have your results in a picture, or in this case a graph, with the independent on the x-axis or the horizontal axis, the y-axis or vertical axis has the independent variable, and we don't join the, plots, uh, the points that we plot we do a line or curve of best fit. We then finally have our trends, which is a representation of our results in words. Uh, sometimes this is included at the start of the discussion, but technically it's uh, part of the results. And what that will show you is you'll describe your trend, so what you actually found, and you'll quote a couple of numbers to illustrate that trend.